What's up guys, welcome back. This is the second instalment of my new series where I critique miniatures sent in by my patrons. Today's model is this werewolf painted by Lena Witzner. I'm probably not pronouncing that correctly, but in my defence I do suffer from a debilitating speech impediment. It's called being Scottish. <laughs> Looking at the model, I would say that you've done a really good job at being neat. All the colours seem to be where you've meant to put them, and I can tell that you've thinned the paint correctly because you don't have any telltale glossy parts where the paint has been applied too thickly. Also, you get bonus props for choosing such a light colour for the skin. Light colours can be very difficult, especially over such a large area. My first and main criticism is to do with contrast. If I just increase the contrast about 60%, you'll see what a dramatic difference that makes. When we look at them side by side like this, you can see just how much more intense and imposing the one on the right appears. When we don't have that sort of level of contrast, the model can look a bit flat and lifeless. I think a pitfall that most people fall into when they're painting light colours is that they don't go dark enough with their shadows. I think you can develop a bit of a mental block that can be hard to get over. It seems to stem from the idea that because you're painting a light colour, you don't want to make the shadows dark because you think that the whole thing will be dark, but that's really not the case. If you look at this white cloth for example, you can see that the shadows go all the way to black, yet it still appears white. In miniature painting, you should always be thinking about how to make the shadows darker without going muddy and how to make the highlights brighter while retaining vibrancy. If we take a colour sample of the darkest and lightest colours on your skin here, you can see that there's actually only a few shades of separation between the two. Here's an example of one that I painted. You can see that the model type and the colour scheme are quite similar, but if we take a swatch of the dark and light colours here and compare them with yours, you can see that the difference between them is actually quite dramatic. We can fix that easily by simply making the shadows a few shades darker. So if we apply that to the model now, you can see that it gives us much more definition to the muscles, and even though we've used a much darker colour, we haven't altered the overall lightness of the skin tone. In practice, you can achieve this by painting a little dark blue wash into the recesses. The next part is the hair. Again, we have the same sort of issue in that there's not enough separation between the colours. To fix that, we can apply a wash of either black or a nice dark purple colour. And then if we bring the highlights back up, it's going to look something like this. I'm not great at drawing with a mouse, so I've, I've done the hair quite crudely, but I think you get the idea. Alright, so now that we've done that, it's actually had a knock-on effect by making the shadows in the skin appear less intense by comparison, so we'll just darken them down a little bit more bringing back our definition. When you're painting a miniature, it's always good to be aware that finishing one section may alter the look of the rest of the model. So if you paint section by section, it's worthwhile to take some pictures and try to look at them objectively to see if you need to go back and do any alterations. So next up we have the gold and the little bone spikes here. I think the gold is fine colour wise. You could up the contrast a bit by adding some more shadows with a, a dark brown, something like Vallejo Armour Brown or Games Workshop Rhinox Hide, so you would just thin it down with some water and apply it as a glaze into the shadows. But a more simple way to improve the look is to mix a bit of bright silver into your gold and use that to edge highlight the armour plates, which would give us something like this. Notice here that I've only hit the upper edges where they would be catching the light, and I've also darkened down the base of the bone pieces. That's going to be really easy to do, just run some sepia wash along the bottom to increase the contrast. The last thing I want to look at is the leather sections. Now when it comes to painting leather, it's all about the texture. I'm not really skilled enough with Photoshop to be able to show that in the image, so instead what I'll do is just show an easy way to get a cool leather effect. Start off with quite a light brown colour. I'm using Vallejo Khaki here. Then we're going to grab a ripped a bit of sponge. This is a piece of packing foam, but you can use whatever you like. Get yourself a few different brown tones and simply sponge on each colour. There's not a lot going on here as far as technique goes, you just dip the sponge into the paint, wipe off the excess on a paper towel and then press it onto your model. Once you've built up a bit of texture with a good mix of colours, you're going to wash the whole thing with some Army Painter Strong Tone. Then once that's dry, you can use some Strong Tone to darken down any spots you think need it, so stuff like folds or cracks in the leather. I used the same process for this guy's waistcoat here you can see that it gives you a really nice leather effect. It doesn't take that long to do and it's really easy, so definitely give that a try and see what you think. So yeah, I think that's everything. 
Maybe we can up the contrast a couple more notches for good measure. Alright guys, so I think the main points here are always think about contrast. Don't be scared about making your shadows dark when you're painting light colours and always remember to edge highlight your metallics. A big thanks to Lena for sending in the pictures. I hope you're not discouraged by any of this. You've got a really good base to work on. If you focus a bit more on contrast, your models are going to be kicking mine up and down the streets in no time. Thanks also to the rest of my awesome patrons. Your support has been amazing. Next up, we'll be continuing the technique series and I'll be showing how to approach feathering, so stay tuned for that one. If you'd like to have your own models featured in this series, you can do so by simply clicking the link in the description box below and signing up to my Patreon for as little as $1 a month. Thanks again. Bye for now. Thank you.